This case was referred to our clinic in order to treat an isolated recession of the upper left canine. It's a class 2 milli recession. We have two big nice papilla and we decided to do a connective tissue graft utilizing double papilla flap. We requested first from the general dentist to place a temporary crown on the tooth, establishing the margin at the level that is desired for the final outcome. So at this level we are ready to proceed. We do a full thickness flap, trapezoidal with curvilinear incisions, followed by split thickness flap. At the same time, we deepithelialize the borders of our flap. And now we can see the amount of abfraction that is present and is associated with the recession. We do root plasty and we remove any root prominence and flatten the root completely in order not to have any irregularities. We treat the root with tetracycline and rinse with saline solution. We take a connective tissue graft from the palate utilizing a one incisor technique and we place the graft into position in order to evaluate the amount of tissue we were able to obtain in, com in comparison to the defect present. Now we will stabilize the graft and we utilize 5O Promigat suture coming from the connective tissue graft outside of the flap and again from outside of the flap towards inside in order not to have overlapping of the connective tissue graft with our incision line. We can also start from outside of the flap, grab the connective tissue graft and come outside of the flap. In this way we put the knot outside of the flap. I have seen no difference between the two techniques in the result, however most of the times I prefer to do the second as I feel more comfortable having the knot sitting outside of the flap and not interfering with the flap adaptation over the side. Finally, we do a periosteal suture in order to stabilize the graft in the final position. At this point, we connect with the two papilla, the two sides of the papilla that will be connected have been deepithelialized. And we utilize again 5O chromic gut suture. Now we want to coronally position the flap, and one of the nicest suture techniques to achieve that is a sling suture. So we go from the flap, around the tooth, inside the flap and we come again back around the tooth. And this will allow the flap to be coronally positioned and completely cover our connective tissue graft. It is very important not to have any tension while you are coronally positioning your flap. Finally, we suture the vertical incisions in an oblique manner in order to allow for coronal adaptation of the flap. At the end, we put some interrupted sutures in order to further stabilize the graft around the margin of the temporary crown. And you can see here that upon lip movement we don't have any pressure in the area. One month later you can see that we have a very nice result, we have complete root coverage and also we were able to create a nice soft tissue profile around the temporary crown. The final crown will be placed two months later. Thank you for watching.